Welcome to Business Spotlight, where we share insights, reflections, and pearls of wisdom from local business owners. My name is Kerry James. I'm a business coach and a facilitator. And today in the spotlight, we have owner of Running Bear, Catriona Marshall. Great to have you here, Catriona, and a very good morning to you. Thank you, Kerry. Looking forward to it. Great. Well, let's uh, let's start off with a bit of an overview then, please, uh, Catriona. Running Bear, what do you specialise in and how long have you been involved in the business, please? Um, Running Bear has been going for about 35 years now. Um, I've only been in the business since 2018 when I bought the business from its previous owner. Um, and we're a running specialist. So whilst we, on one hand, are a retailer, we very much think of ourselves as a service operation. People come not just to buy running shoes, but they come and they get a, a gait analysis, but quite often take up to about an hour to serve a customer. So it's a very specialist service, open to everybody, welcome to everybody, whether they're a runner or not. Um, and we focus on selling trainers and solving all sorts of running problems. Great. Well, quite timely, given that the uh, the London Marathon was was over the weekend there, Catriona. But let's uh, let's just reflect on um, what's happened in this strange world over the last three years with with lockdown, uh, huge growth in inflation, huge growth in interest rates. How has all of that affected the running bear business and and the the industry in general? Do you think? Well, I think. Overall, it's been a net positive. It's been a bumpy ride. I think when everybody went into lockdown, all of our business models were thrown up in the air. We barely had a website at the time and we went from being 100% store to being 100% online. And supplier supply chains were thrown up in the air. And one of the things that really has affected us longer term is that suppliers started to go, the big brands, you know, the big brands of the sporting world have started to engage in a major way with consumers, direct consumers, and um, through their websites and their social media. And that's something that they've had a taste for and will continue, so it becomes a threat to us in the industry. Um, but we've had a good tailwind in terms of people being out, being more sporting and getting into running. Um, and that's continued. It's, it's dropped off a bit, but it has continued. And we've managed to sort of ride the waves of the supply chain, having too little stock and then too much stock and the market being flooded with, with stock that was then discounted. So it's been an interesting time. Um, and I think we've come out in an okay place, but we've had to be very fleet of foot throughout. That's interesting you mentioned your your suppliers. And I'm just thinking about you know the big brands in your industry and how they've done a lot of direct to consumer work. How does that operate? Do, do you have a range of different relationships? Are your relationships a lot stronger with certain brands than others? How does that operate within Running Bear? The reality is it's forced that um, situation where some brands have gone headlong into direct consumer relationships and others have seen the value in, in continuing to have good, strong relationships at the grassroots level where we are as an independent. From a customer point of view, there's no doubt that customers want to have that opportunity for a human face to face. And, and this is where I think often independents and small businesses swim upstream because we really value having that face-to-face -face or on the telephone, human contact, really getting to know customers on a one-to-one -one level, understanding what the challenges and issues are and solving the problems. Whereas the, the whole movement in the market is towards apps and technology and being able to um, fill in all sorts of um, forms, essentially, digitally, to work out exactly what your solution is. But there's nobody to talk to, there's nobody to discuss it with. So the brands have gone headlong, many of them into that their digital direction, which will suit some customers. And we've just stuck to our guns in quite an old fashioned way in many ways and just face to face and kept that human relationship going. So it really has diverged between the digital brands and the brands who see us as an important tool in their armory for, for growing their own businesses. That's interesting you mentioned the you know the addition of all these extra technologies and smart technologies and, and tracking of performance at Texas. So when somebody comes into your shop to buy a pair of running shoes, for example, in Catriona, how many of them have some sort of digital enhancement linked to that? Well, everybody who comes in, we will do a gait analysis. So it is pretty simple technology though, because we'll simply get them on the running machine, even running up and down the street and we will film them and we'll do some analysis in terms of how they're running and we'll work through different shoes to get the right solution for them. So it's a very simple basis of technology. Um, we can and probably will in the future get a lot more sophisticated with that. But the most important thing is that you've got two people doing it together, seeing the evidence and talking about the solution. 
as opposed to one person sitting at home on the laptop um, working through a series of questions which and an algorithm which um, may um, get to the right answer for them. But then it's all in the testing after that. So we are adopting technology both online and on our website um, and also the way we run our running club. We've got a virtual running club um, and we run that through an app. So we don't shun technology in any way. It's just making sure we get the right balance between technology and being a people business. Excellent. Fascinating stuff. So apart from the supplier side and the technology side, what would you say are the key challenges to running Bear at the moment? I think one of the key challenges for any small business or certainly a small business like ours is gaining scale. And we, we need to gain scale to do a lot of the things that we want to do. We realize that in terms of our importance to suppliers, um, our ability to get a quantum in terms of developing our own brands, being able to make an online offer, make money. So there's lots of areas where we, we need scale in order to be able to expand and do the things that we want to do. But we want to achieve that scale by being very true to our brand and our, our whole philosophy at running there, which is very much about a loyal team, loyal customers, loyal suppliers, and, and, and working within a community. So we want to build scale within these parameters and, and, and then that will enable us to do even more of the things that we're enjoying doing at the moment. So it's a virtuous circle, but it's a bit like a flywheel. It's a slow virtuous circle and we're just being patient. It's going to take time and there's no quick wins here if we want to tra stay true to ourselves. There's no quick wins in order to get that, uh, that growth, extrapolate that growth um, overnight. So we're just doing it step by step. And if I understand it correctly, Captain, you've just got the one retail outlet at the moment, is that right? We have one retail outlet at the moment. We have another one in the pipeline. And we've got ambitions for other different ideas um, to expand the brand. So it's, it's exciting. We're just doing it step by step. So that was really going to be the link to my next question. Aspirations for the business. You mentioned scaling up. So where do you see Running Bear in the next, say, three to five years? We see it as building. It's, it's like a community out. So we want a bigger community of bears who are the people who are running the business with lots of different skills because that's important. That's another thing that's a challenge of a small business is everybody's multi-skilled and you work very hard to make sure that you, you cover all the bases in a small team without completely exhausting them and burning them out passionate as they all are, is to build that community of bears and build a community of, of customers um, who, who engage with our business in many different ways, whether it's through our running club, um, as customers online, as customers in the shop. So it's about how we, we grow and expand that business. And it will come initially through stores, um, but it will come through growing the community in lots of different ways as well. Okay. And we, we, we ultimately would like to have a national um, community of bears. A national community of bears. That's interesting. What, what, how, what does that look and feel and sound like? And what sort of numbers have you got in mind there? Well, oh, just in our little catchment, we've got over three thousand members of our of our running club, and um, who engage all the time in terms of whether it's through the WhatsApp groups or whether it's through Facebook or in reality they meet three times a week. So we've got a very engaged um, running community, and it's a it's a really um, it's a very um, accessible running community. It's not an elite running community. We've got some great runners in there, but we've got every shape and size and speed of runner is welcome in our community. And it's very much a, a social community for running. And so seeing that grow from our current catchment across the Northwest and then ultimately nationally, supported by a very unique and different retail offer, is how we see it. So it's community first supported by a retail offer. What shape that retail offer takes, it will certainly be more outlets and, um, and it will be supported by an online offer as well. We just want to make sure it's all done within the bare personality and all done from community roots upwards. And so you started off by saying you took over Running Bear in 2018, I think you said, uh, Catriona. So were you a business owner prior to that? No, I had a corporate career prior to that. So I, I was an FMCG originally in my career. And then I had a corporate career through Asda Pets at Home Hobbycraft. And, and then I retired from the corporate life. And I put my passion and my hobby, which is running, together with my other passion, which is retail. And, and this has been a huge freedom in, in being able to do whatever you think is the right thing to do and instinctively you want to do in a business environment with your passion. Um, so it's been like a great and exciting experiment in any way, in many ways, um, but we do run it as a serious business as well. 
Interesting, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I started up in, in uh, big corporate, if you like, and now in now helping small business owners, of course. So the, the question I've got for you then, Catriona, is I'm sure you did a lot of learning on the uh, on the, the big big company side, but what specifically have you learned since 2018 when you became a business owner? And what advice would you give yourself now if you were starting day one as a, a small to medium enterprise business owner? I think the first thing I've learned is how important loyalty is, true loyalty. You need a team who are really loyal to you and to the business. You need loyalty from your customers. And that has been particularly important over the last few years with lockdown. And, and you need real loyalty from your suppliers. So building genuine relationships with people um, within the business and around the business is the most important thing. Um, you're not moving from job to job every year or every 18 months as you often do in a corporate career. This is about long-term relationships, two-way relationships. So that's very important. And nowadays, having a, a, a social conscience is really important. So we make a lot of decisions. that are not particularly good commercial decisions on the surface, but we know in the long term that the right things to be doing for the business. So that's very important. And... Um, you can throw out the corporate rule book. It's good to know what the corporate rule book is. And, and I make a big effort with the team in, in running there so that they understand all the things I've learned over the years so to be able to impart and share that knowledge and discipline and process driven organization. But it's also very liberating to be able to throw the rule book out and to do the right thing at the right time and to operate with pace. So don't be scared of doing that. Um, and don't be scared of investing especially when times are tough. During lockdown, lots of people pulled the horns in, batten down the harches, and we basically you know, put a lot more money into the business to say, no, this is the time when we need to grow, not the time when we need to shrink. So I think these are all of these and many more things I've learned in corporate life that have helped over the last few years. That's great advice, great advice. So, well, it's been, it's been fascinating, Catriona. One more question, if I may, for anybody interested in uh, talking to you or joining the uh, or becoming a bear um, <laughs> any offers or any announcements anything you'd like to share with anybody interested who's watching uh, business spotlight today well certainly anybody who listens to business spotlight please come into running bear enjoy the service tell them you've listened to business spotlight and we will give you a nice healthy discount on anything that you buy um, and also just really welcome the small business running community. We like to work with other small businesses. We work with many of them. And just whether it's working together or just sharing information, helping each other out, then we're 100% welcome to that too. So thank you, Kerry. Thank you very much. And just in case anybody's wondering, uh, Running Bear is based in Alderley Edge uh, and uh, has a, a big community uh, and, and community engagement roundabout. So... Catriona, once again, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for your time and all the very best with uh, The Running Bear. Thank you, Kerry. Hope to see you soon.